Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna move on in our Mandela Sampler Throw to Hexagon 13. So for those that are not understanding completely, so we've been getting some messages on it. It's like why are you not filming all the rest of them? Well, as we said here, like number one, the number one that you see in this position, the only difference between all of those six is the color um, sequence. So if you go on the pattern itself, you will find number two and you'll find all the rest of them the, and you'll find all the color sequences and we'll talk about that. So number seven which we've already filmed are in this position. Again, to see how they all look similar, it's just a different color. Number 13, there's six of those and that's what we're gonna be doing today and those are in the yellow. This one I've been really quite nervous about uh, teaching because it looks kinda complicated so hopefully it's not as complicated as it looks. <laughs> uh, no promises today. I haven't actually done a, a sample in advance so we'll figure that out. So let's go to the instructions and quickly talk about that. So looking at the instructions, when we're going to see all the different ones, so we have two, three, four, and you can see there's not a lot of written instruction here because it's just assigning you the color. So the information has already been re written out here and it says uh, using A for round number one, F for round number two, and etc. and this will create this particular one. In number seven which we filmed, there was a slight difference of instructions. So the sequence was changed uh, in the color sequence and then also stitch markers were in place for that one that we did. Then for number 13, that's gonna start on page number three. And page number three, we're going to be uh, providing some extra instructions. This round here is scaring me a little bit but that's because I haven't read it yet. It just looks long. <laughs> so we're gonna get through there and that will then go on to page number four when you're going to do that. And etc. So you will see that the rest of those kind of fall in line with that one as well. So let's take a look what we've already done and then we're gonna move on to today's example. So far this is hexagon number one, hexagon number seven. So the difference between one and six is that they were just a different color breakdown. So this one here number seven, again the rest of the other five will just be a different color breakdown but the overlay is the same. So let's move along today into number 13, lucky 13 and we need to create six of those and again there's a different color breakdown for each one of those versions as well. So we'll just do the main one and then you can substitute the color from that point. As we move into number 13, you're going to say work A, fasten off. Well what, what, are, what are you doing for A? So remember we're looking at the hexagon number one through six on hexagon one. So we're gonna be using that as our example to do that. So remember that the A color which is the white is the strategy color. So even if you're changing out your colors, where A falls is something that you wanna be paying attention to in order to keep the balance of this particular project. So we are going to work. So if you've already done uh, hexagons uh, one and seven already, you pretty much know this, the stitch that you need to do but we are going to cover that today anyway. Let's begin round number, or sorry, let's begin our starting chain. So let's begin. We're gonna create a slip knot using a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook and I'm using Karen one pound today just as a disclaimer. You're going to chain four. So one, two, three, four and then slip stitch to the beginning and form the beginning ring and let's move on to round number one keeping the same color going. So in round number one is like before chain up one and one single crochet into the center and then chain two and then another one into the center and you wanna do that so you get your six sides as always. So chain two, single crochet in the middle, chain two, single crochet in the middle, chain two, single crochet in the middle. So I wanna count. So one, two, three, four, five, chain two, single crochet in the middle. This is the sixth one and to join it, chain two, and go to the first single crochet. So you should have a total of six of those single crochets that are going around in. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's uh, fasten off this. I'll only show it to you once in this video and let's show you that next. So cutting your strand, if you went right over top of the beginning one, you can cut that but you'll have to secure it with the tapestry hook if you didn't do that. Okay, turn it to the back side and just run your yarn through. So anytime you not need to change your yarn, I'm pretty much recommending that for this and I would do it as you would go. Therefore you won't have as many tails to deal with at the end which could be quite frustrating especially when there's a lot. So you're just going to trim that right to the project 
go back and forth three times and then that was a charm. Let's begin round number two starting with the different colors. So two and three are a different color. Let's begin round number two and three. So it's like what we already know. Hopefully this is not the first video you're following. So um, I'll try my best anyway. So you're gonna go into a chain two space and it says to attach chain one and then single crochet in but it looks nicer if you put it onto your hook now and then go through the, uh, the chain space and then pull through and then you'll have two loops on the hook pull through two. That's a standing single crochet. So in round number two you're going to chain two after you do that and then single crochet back into there. So we're establishing our corners. So going to the next chain two space it's single crochet chain two single crochet and please do this all the way around. You should have a total of six of these going all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the same. So when you get all the way around you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet and we're gonna move on to round number three. Okay so keeping this color. Don't fasten off at the end of this round either. So we're gonna keep it going for round number four and five and six. So this is pretty much almost gonna be a solid color for a little bit. So let's uh, continue on to round number three. To make it look kind of consistent what you can do for this is that you can just immediately single crochet right into the chain two space and we've done this before. So we don't chain up one and then or sorry we don't slip stitch over and then uh, chain up one and then start. You can actually see it. So you can really hide it well if you just go into the corner. So chain two space, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So like the rest you're gonna skip the first one out and you're gonna go to the second and you're going to single crochet. So that one's by itself and then you have a chain two space. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. You skip the first one out from a corner and then you go to the second one and then you got the next corner in a row. So please do this all the way around. This is round number three. When you get all the way back around don't forget you have to still skip one and go to the second over. That's kind of where you started and you're going to single crochet and then you're going to join to the top of the first single crochet that went into that chain two space. So we have to get some stitch markers ready. You should be able to say six sides at this point which I can. So let's get some stitch markers ready and you'll need a total of six of them and just make them uh, yay long and I'm just gonna do a color that I can easily see. So just relatively long because I don't know what we're doing actually yet. So let's do this. So stitch markers, six of them. So round number four we're going to apply stitch markers. I have them off to the side here. So again right where we are just go immediately and just start single crocheting in the chain two space. So d ignore the instruction of what it says to do. It just, it just looks nicer. So single crochet, chain two and single crochet. So we are going to place a stitch marker on the third one out. The second one of the corner is considered one. We're gonna skip the first one and then we're gonna single crochet the next two. So one and two. So if the second one is of the corner is considered one, two and three this is the third one right here and you're going to place a stitch marker in that stitch. This is for the surface overlay in the future. So if you've done hexagon number uh, seven you would have saw that. So now you're gonna go into your next corner immediately. So you're gonna single crochet, chain two and single crochet. So you will notice is that you can see a single crochet after the corner, one by itself and then another and then this is the next corner. So if you can make a decision if you're gonna go all the way around and just place it in that position later or do it as you go. So after the first, after this corner the first one's in so this is one. You skip the next one so it's, this is two, this is three so that's where the stitch marker go and then your corner's next. So you can easily tell in this particular level because it's so um, early on. So you have one, two and three and the third one is in and you can pull it through. So make a decision whether you're gonna do it as you, as you go or wait till later. It's up to you and I'll see you at the end of this round. So coming up all the way around remember we started off with the corner by just reaching over so we have to just slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet to finish that. Okay, so all my stitch markers are in. I did I did go all the way around and placed in the rest of them uh, 
when you weren't watching me. So let's begin to round number five and six. We're gonna continue with this color. So we're not placing any stitch markers. So five and six is what you already know. So just reach on over to the corner. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And like before, you just skip over the first one and then just single crochet the rest until you get to the next corner. Just ignore those stitch markers. Leave them out of your vision for now. And when you get to the corner, you are going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and then skip the next one. So please do this for now five and six and we will finish off this color at the end of number six. So please do the next two rounds which is this one plus the next one. I'll see you at the end of that in just a moment. So I've now just come up to the end of number six. So I'm going to now fasten this off and we are going to start with the color A once again which will be in this case it'll be white. So let's uh, just get this ready and let's move on and figure out how to do number seven. Let's begin round number seven. You're going to take your weight and you're going to join it and I'm recommending standing single crochet as before. So standing single, chain two, single crochet. So you have to count over in order to be strategic. So the first one is actually right here. So one, two and go to the third. Before you do that though, chain one and then jump into the third for a single crochet. This one that's been marked with the stitch marker, you're going to do a long single crochet. So just going right into there and let that fall over to the back side and pull through and you're gonna pull up enough slack that it will sit comfor comfortably at the same level and then yarning over pulling it through two and just kind of move it out to the side and the very next stitch so you're not skipping any stitch is going to be a single crochet and you can pull the stitch marker out because it says to do that. So now chain only one, skip in the next two and then you're back on the corner. So I'll show you another side. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So skipping to the third one, so one, two, go to the third, chain one before you do that. So single crochet into the third one. Do your long single crochet, pull up and then in the very next stitch just move it out to the side if you don't see it and you can pull that stitch marker out, chain one and then skip the final two and go right into the corner. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Do this all the way around. This is round number seven. Coming to the end of number seven, I'm just going to skip the final and just go to the first standing single crochet. This is the end of this color so just uh, fasten this off and meet me back here and get rid of all your stitch markers at this point and we'll start round number eight in just a moment. Let's begin round number eight. Let's start off in the corner. Do a standing single crochet and then chain two and stand and then a single crochet. So this is a nice easy round to be able to understand. So you're going to then uh, continue along and you are going to skip the next single crochet from the corner and this chain one spaces you're going to put in three single crochets into each. So one, two, and three and then just jump on over these three and just come into the next chain one space and put three in that side. So one, two, and three like that and then you're gonna go right into the corner. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So to recap, these chain one spaces will each have three single crochets. So one, two, three. Jump to the next one on the other side of this so don't interfere with it. So one, two, three and then your corners. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Please do this for round number eight. I'm coming up to the end of round number eight and I'm just going to go in. So don't fasten off. So we're just gonna slip stitch to the first one and then we're going to start on to round number nine and we're gonna continue this color uh, as we continue along. We have the stitch markers to place in but not until round number ten. So let's move on to round number nine first. Round number nine is like what you already know for when you were down here in the red. So just immediately come right to the corner. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet and again skipping the first one out now like we had been and then single crochet the rest. Then do your next corner, single crochet, chain two, single crochet and skip the first one and then single crochet the rest. Please do this all the way around. This is round number nine. When you come around on number nine, you're just going to join it to the first single crochet you started with 
and then you'll move on to round number 10. Have those stitch markers ready. Get them back up and let's begin round number 10 with some stitch marker action. Let's start round number 10. Just go immediately to the corner, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. The first thing or the second single crochet of the corner is considered one. You're skipping the next one. So the next one is two, then three, four, and five. The fifth one here you're going to place in that stitch marker. So you'll do this on each side. And then you'll carry on to the corner. The corners are always gonna be the same of single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So remember the second one of a corner is considered one. Skip in the next one out from a corner and go to the next one. This is two, three, four, and five. This is the stitch marker. So please do this all the way around. This is round number 10. So I'm coming up to the end of number 10 and I'm just fastening off then this color. I'm bringing back white. Remember that is the, the common color and we'll be begin round number 11 for just one round of white. So starting in any chain two space in a corner is just one round of white. You already know what to do. You're standing single, chain two, and then single. And then you're gonna skip the first one out of the corner and go to the second and single crochet all the way to the next corner and do your next corner and then keep on moving around. So ignore those stitch markers for this round. I'll see you at the end of round number 11. Once you're done number 11 just slip stitch to the first standing single crochet and then that's it. So let's uh, move on to round number 12 using the color G and I'll be back and you're gonna have to have some stitch markers ready as well. Using the color G I'm just randomizing my colors and we're going to do round number 12 and 13 and 14 with um, G and we're also going to continue. So G is pretty much the ending color uh, for most of the rest of this. So I'm going to start off and we're gonna, we have the stitch markers handy and I'm going to start off in the corner. So standing single, chain two and single crochet in. So what we need to do is that we need to place the stitch marker in the second single crochet following the chain two space. So this is considered one. You're gonna skip the next one as always and this is gonna be considered two. So this is where you'll put your stitch marker in. I would, I would, uh, if you weren't watching me, I would, I know it's the second one all the way around. So I would just like literally crochet around this thing without worrying about the stitch marker and put it in at the end. So you know it's the second one away from a corner. So then the rest of this uh, row, uh, sorry, this rest of the side is just single crochet in each to the next corner and continue around. So don't fasten off at the end and place your stitch, stitch markers on the second stitch in from the corner. So I'll see you at the end of this round. This is round number 12. Once you get around number 12, you're just going to slip stitch to the beginning, single crochet, standing single. And now rounds number 13 and 14 are next. Using the same color, it's already what you know. Ignore the stitch markers that are in play and you're just gonna start off in the corner. So do rounds number 13 and 14, just uh, single crochet, chain two single crochet on uh, skipping the first one out and then just go to the second and etc. And please do this all the way around and I'll see you at the end of round number 14. So there's two rounds of this. So this is round number 13 and 14 and we're gonna continue with G so don't change out that color when you get to the end of number 14. When you get around on number 14, it's the last stitch. You're just going to fasten off. You're just going to join. We are going to do uh, the white for round number 15 and 16. So we'll be finishing off the two rounds using white. So let's begin number 15 in just a moment. Now round number 15 we're going to do long single crochet and it's gonna resemble almost like icicles. It's actually really kind of cool. Daniel designed something like this before. It looks really cool. So you're gonna start off in a corner. It's already what you know is standing single crochet, chain two and single crochet. So let's talk. So we're going to skip the first one out like we normally do and single crochet in the next. Do you see this single crochet down here or sorry this one down here? That's the first stitch that you need to go into for the long single crochet and that's going to count as this stitch here. So you're just going to come down and you're gonna pull up to the equal height and finish it. So that counts as a stitch that it's sitting in front of. So then you'll single crochet the next 
and then you'll do another long single. So it's not this one, it's the second one away. So you're just gonna come in, pull, pull up, finish it and then single crochet in the next. You get that? So the next one is here. Try to be consistent with the tension and then single crochet the next and you're gonna do this all the way to the corner. Usually these kind of stitches are the deal breaker for crocheters. I'm not sure why. It looks really kind of cool but I think people kind of get nervous about it. Okay and then you're gonna come into the next one here. And then you're gonna go into your corner space. Okay so once that last one's in so make sure it looks balanced. So then you'll go into your corner. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So to start a new side you're going to skip the first one out and single crochet and then you're going to jump on down. Okay and that counts as the one that's sitting in front of so you'll single crochet the next. And you can pull those stitch markers out once you understand this as well. So you come on down and then single crochet the next. So you're gonna do that all the way and it should look like this. And once you're good you can just pull the stitch marker out for that one and etc. So please do this all the way around. This is round number 15. So coming to the end of number 15 just slip stitching and now the final round here we go. It is already what you know. So just a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, skip the first one out from the corner and go to the second and single crochet out across the top of the stitches and then do your next corner and etc. And this will conclude off round number 16 where I'll meet you back here and then we're gonna start the surface overlay from that point. So this is it for round number 16. So now we're gonna fasten off completely and then we're gonna start our surface overlay. We're gonna be using the color white and then dividing up our lines and doing the fun stuff in the middle. So we have to do our dividing lines first and then the other fun stuff. So let's do that next surface overlay. So let's do our surface overlay. This is number 13. So like before if this is uh, your first video then this is how we did it. We just looped around a large Okay, a large loop like this. So don't do anything as far as like putting a slip knot on it and start right in the center and pulling that loop from the back side. So you have to surface overlay from the back. So you're gonna come up and you bring that through. You are going to follow the chain two space. So immediately go into the first one, the chain two space and then just yarning over just the yarn going to the yarn ball and pulling this through and that's a slip stitch. Now this loop is gonna be really loose because it's a starting one but we'll tighten it up when we go to fasten that off. So just go to the next chain two space and pull up and then the rest of the loops should look like a consistent size. So you need to follow this right up to the edge and then I will meet you back there in just a second. I'll show you how to fasten off. So we need to do all six of these separating chain two um, corner spaces um, before you're moving on to the rest. So what I would do if it were me and you weren't watching me I would just do all of the surface overlay and then I would just grab my tapestry needle and just weave in all the ends at the end of the experience uh, for these dividing lines. So you're gonna go right up to the edge right into the white and then that's where your journey will end. So once you've got that done just lay it down and just leave a long enough tail and what I need you to do is just grab a tapestry needle. Again I would do the tapestry at the end like I would do all of the six dividing lines first and you're gonna go down into the project into the other side. Now because you have a white border you can literally go back and forth on the border a total of three times. Don't interfere with the outside edge because you're gonna need to sew this together with other motifs in the end. And you're just gonna do that. So back and forth three times. So now we have to deal with that starting strand that it has that large loop. So the starting strand just put that onto your tapestry needle as well. And before you pull on it just turn it over and you need to get the same kind of distance that you can see with the rest. So when you pull I want it to look pretty much the same and then once it's done you're going to weave it into the center of this 
back and forth the total three times. So do all the dividing lines now and then meet me back here in just a moment and then we'll start the other stuff. And the other stuff I think is actually just a one revolution around so it's, there's not a lot of tails to deal with like it would be with these dividing lines. That's my guess so far and I'll see you back here in just a moment. All my dividing lines have now been done so it's all been woven in the back as well. So let's begin our journey. So we have to start somewhere here. We have to end up up there and then back down. So it's a little bit of a, a guess. So just kind of keep an eye on what you're doing in one section and then duplicate it over. So I'm gonna start here. I'm just guessing. And so I will secure the loose end later. And so then I'm going to move up. So just moving stitch by stitch. You can move on to angles. It's like a game of chess. And then coming up. Okay, so I'm going into the stitch marked one so that will secure that in. I'm going to jump over that same one and then start moving back down towards the other side. So coming down at an angle. There you go. It's just really a guess. Once I'm here I'm going to just jump on over so that I have a nice straight line going across that and then start your journey again moving up. So you're just gonna continue to rotate around just going up and down with the motion of the ocean and continue that journey around. So I'll leave this in your capable hands and I'll see you at the end where we'll fasten off and I'll show you a couple tricks for that too. And I'll see you back here in just a moment. When you come back around what we need to do is that we just need to cut this and I've just come across the top and I need to go into this piece here. So I wanna pull to the front side. I don't wanna see where I stopped and started. So the secret to doing that is pull to the front side here and scoop it underneath this stitch here. And what you're doing is that you're making another stitch that looks identical but it's actually done with your your needle. So you're gonna pull it so it looks like it's the same distance and then go back down through the middle of that where you just came from. And that will make it look like it's a finished stitch. See? So on the other side you're going to turn it over and just weave it in just with this within the same color. So that you don't end up with tails everywhere. Now we still have the starting strand to finish. And so when we go to pull on that we wanna make it look like the same size too. So again back and forth three times is the magic number. And let's put that other straggler on. You can pull out the other stitch markers. So I want, before I pull on it, I wanna just turn it over so I can look at it and see if it's the right size. And it is. So it's right, actually just pull on a little bit. See? Pull it, make it look good. And then once you're happy with it, just secure it in. So back and forth three times on the back side. In the same color is the best. Therefore, it won't be as obvious when the blanket flips over. And this would be how you would complete the other one. So we're gonna do a recap in just a second. And we're just gonna trim this yarn. And this will be the third hexagon. There's only four types. And this is a third one, number 13. Let's turn this over and let's quickly review. So here's the finished version. So what I would want to do is take it and, and damp lock it or take a steamer to it which I will do. And then this is what we did today. Our last time that we saw each other we were doing this one here. This was number seven. Beautiful work. Looks great. And then finally the first one that started this whole journey is right here. So next time you see me we'll do number four, the final and it's actually just one solid color with strategic lines that will just finish it off beautifully. So I'll see you next time and it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowders. So it's my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.